video which is going to take you step by step through the process of doing a word search using the Accordance Bible software. You should be able to achieve similar results using the BibleWorks program which is designed to be used on a PC or the Logos Bible software which is available in both PC and Apple Mac version but for this purpose in this particular demonstration we'll be using the Accordance Bible software which is designed to be used on an Apple Mac computer. Alongside this, you may find it helpful to have the, uh, the PDF document printed out and available as a guide, the step-by-step -step guide to doing a word study using the Accordance Bible software. And as we go through this exercise, we'll be actually doing these steps one after the other. So I think you'll find that useful to have as we go. So let's move straight into the copy of the Accordance that I'm using here. And to get a bit of extra real estate on the screen, I'll turn off the apparatus, the critical apparatus, and the section for my notes. And I will also figure, configure it so that we're going to do an Old Testament search. We'll leave it with the NRSV as the major text, search text. I'll tell it to, um, we'll go back to just any text at all at this stage. We'll set this up so the Hebrew Bible is generated for us. We'll leave the NRSV in place and we'll start by going to the Septuagint just to demonstrate the Septuagint. So the default option is that we're starting at Genesis 1. There it is in Hebrew, in English and of course in Greek from the Septuagint. Our task however, hitting the tab bar to select the whole of that field, our task is to go to Genesis 32 verse 26 and um, we're searching in the NRSV and we're going to hit the search button and you get the immediate result. Now you may notice straight away that the Hebrew Bible is using it as verse 27. The Septuagint is also following that versification but the NRSV has it as verse 26 and the software has managed any difference like that that occurs between the different verse numbering traditions in ancient and modern texts. So the first thing then is to look at that task and we've been at that particular passage and we've been asked to particularly focus on the word bless and make that the object of our study. So I'm going to bring up another English Bible. I'm going to bring up the New American Standard, the 1995 edition which you'll see has the letter S at the end, which is a reminder to me, a flag to me, that it's, um, it has the strong numbers tagged into the text. And I'm going to change the NRSV to the new um, Jew uh, Jewish Publication Society edition, so I have the advantage of looking at a Jewish translation. And I'm going to turn off the automatic compare text function, so I just focus on the text that we have there in front of us. As my cursor moves over the page, you will see that there's a, an instant details box that occurs down the bottom. And if I can just adjust the, um, the size of those things, that'll make it a bit easier for us to read them. So I come across to the word bless, and you'll notice that the instant details is telling me that bless is representing in the Hebrew a word that's been coded in the strong system as word number 1288. It's the word Barak, which is given to me in both Hebrew letters and Greek um, numbers. Now there are a number, way, number of ways in which I can look that up. Um, when I have my cursor over the word bless in the, in the English, the relevant part of the Hebrew is highlighted, so I know that this is the word I'm looking for, these letters here. And if my cursor is over there, I get a slightly more detailed analysis. I'm told, again, the exact form of the word, barakta. I'm told that it's the second family of meanings from a barak, that the verbal stem is barak, that this is a verb in the peel conjugation, in the perfect tense, it's a second person masculine singular, and the basic meaning is bless. Now that's the information you'll see in the handout at step two. If I go to step three, there are a number of options we can do. One is I can look it up using that particular number from the strong system. This number here, the 1288. To do that, I need to open my Strong's Hebrew Concordance and I choose the key number option and I simply type 1288. I hit the search 
and here we are 1288 there's the brief description from Strong's concordance of the word Barak I can copy that if I wish and insert it into an essay that I'm doing for my lecturer another option which is not represented in the worksheet you have is that I can do a right click on the word bless and I can search on key number instead of searching on word and immediately I'm given a set of results where the search function has has it been based on the underlying Hebrew word not the English word which might have been used to translate Hebrew word number 1288 which is Barak now the value of this comes when we go to the details window not only do I get the standard things which show me the distribution throughout the Bible but if I go to analysis you can see that in fact this word is translated a number of different ways abundantly actually all bless congratulate curse down greatly greet had indeed kneel persist pronounce salute surely and thank I can in fact generate an instant concordance with the exact examples of all that the Bible references and enough of the phrase to let me see what's going on and of course I can generate a table which will give me the numerical data for the occurrences of Barak or 1288 in the strong system in each of the texts in the Bible where that particular word occurs so the advantage of doing a search by key number is that you will, you will be tracking the underlying Hebrew even if you don't know any Hebrew with, and you, you won't just be searching on the English word bless but you'll be getting all the occurrences of the underlying Hebrew the third option which is step 3 part B in the handout is actually to go to the word in question Barakta and to triple click on that word and you'll see that it immediately takes us into a technical lexicon for that particular word in the language of the text that we've been using in this case the Hebrew and Aramaic lexicon of the Old Testament we get all this detail on the me on the meaning and the distribution of this particular word there are lots of hyperlinks as we go through um, and we can of course do things like we can um, if we come down to the PL we can um, um, we can, we can look at different examples of the word, see how it's being used. Um, the, wind, the text will pop up for us there, which is all very good. But we can also um, um, click on any of these. And I'm, I was up wanting the passage that we're actually working on, but um, here it is here. Genesis, the angel blesses Jacob, Genesis 32. But if I click on that link, we get the actual sentence. If I want to look at it in the Hebrew, we can. If I want to look at it in the Greek, that's available. If I want to look at it in the Hebrew and Greek simultaneously, I can do that as well. When I'm finished, I simply click the window shut. So triple clicking on the key word in either Hebrew or Greek will take us directly to the key resource. So if I'm looking at that in the Septuagint, here's the word here. Triple click on that and it'll take me to Bidag, which is the Greek lexicon, similar thing to, to Halot in the Old Testament, with the Hebrew text at least. So back to the Hebrew. Now, if I'm not sure what PL signifies, you might remember it tells me here that this particular verb is a PL form, then of course I can go to my Hebrew um, grammar, which in this case is Gesenius's Hebrew grammar, and I can do a search for the, um, the title, in other words, the entry. Click on the search button. It's going to say, now, is this actually the word you're looking for? Yes, it is. Repeat the search command and takes me directly to the section in the grammar which discusses PL. And I might be particularly interested in the paragraph here that tells me what the fundamental idea of PL is. So I can copy that and I can paste that in so that I can show my lecturer what a well-informed student I am in terms of the actual significance of the grammatical form that's being used. Now if I go back to my text, I can also simply do a word search. Instead of searching for verses, I can search for a word. 
I can do it in Hebrew, Greek, English, whatever, but let's do it in Hebrew. I type in Barak. The computer knows that I'm searching on the Hebrew Bible, therefore it automatically puts the text into Hebrew characters instead of English characters. Of course, there's no good searching in the New Testament for a Hebrew word, so I have to set that back here, and um, the verses come up automatically. I do the search, it finds 226 occurrences of the Hebrew word Barak in the Hebrew Bible. And what you have on the screen now is the same as what you have at the beginning of step 5 in the handout. If we go to the details box, we of course can do a number of things. We can go to the analysis page and get a brief rundown, which is what you have in your handout. I can go to the hits graph. If that's, again, if that's something I want to use in my assignment, I right click, copy the picture, go to my assignment, decide, <coughs> excuse me, whereabouts I might want to use that particular graphic, paste it in, I can move it around, resize it, do all the normal sort of things. I can generate a concordance and I can decide which bit of the concordance that I want to copy. I might just want to copy these occurrences here. My lecturer will think I've done a lot of work and I've found all these. I've actually developed this concordance and I've carefully typed them all out. Hopefully I've done it correctly. I may be interested in the statistical data. I may of course be wanting to see it in, the, in a different pie chart. Looking at it in this way, which is what you'll also find in your handout, that's giving me the data to begin to ask myself questions about why, why would this word typically be found in a masculine form? Why would it be 156 times masculine to 28 times feminine? Is it because God is often the subject? Is it because blessing or cursing people was a prerogative of the patriarch? Is it that we don't hear the women's perspectives very much in the Hebrew Bible? They're the kind of questions that this sort of data might lead me to start asking. I've said we can copy the concordance results and of course we can go to the statistical table that I've just mentioned. Now at this stage we still haven't actually done a word study although we have begun to gather together all the kind of information that gets us thinking about the variety of ways in which this word can be used, its distribution in the Old Testament, what grammatical forms it occurs in, and the range of English terms that are used to translate it. But now it's time to look up the commentaries and actually consult a word study and entry. So in here's one example, the Theological Word Book of the Old Testament. I can do a search in various ways, including English content, transliteration, Hebrew, Greek, whatever, entry number, etc. We're going to look in the Hebrew entry for Barak, and we're going to tell it to find, and straight away it goes to a section 285, Barak. It's relatively short, um, but it does have a section down here which is quite interesting as well. So we might copy the whole lot at this stage, paste it into Evernote, paste it into our assignment, and then we can always go through and we can just, you know, just keep the bit we want to or whatever when it's time to do the assignment. So depending on which particular modules you've got on your Bible software, you may have the Theological Dictionary of the Old Testament, you might have the Jenny and Westermann um, Theological Lexicon of the Old Testament, which is an excellent resource. It'll give you about 24 pages of word study on the word Barak. And at the top of, of the article, it will also give you all the cross-references for Theological Dictionary of the Old Testament, for Theological Word Book of the Old Testament, um, for Strong, for BDB, and a whole lot of other standard reference works. As with any tools, the critical thing, of course, is not simply to have the tools, but to learn how to use them, and then to practice using them so you become skilled in doing that. I hope that this short video has been of some help for you in seeing what the tools can do and also helping you to develop the skills you need to use them.